speak aloud. Hey, so guys, um, sorry. Um, this is the uh, leadership call here on, uh, on Tuesday. And uh, um, Casey and Maria went out in uh, four, and there was a couple of things they did to properly prepare uh, for their success. And I'm gonna have her share some of that today. Maria may hop on here in a few minutes, maybe not, but um, Casey, uh, take it away. Good morning again. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was a the, the conference call kind of deal with Andy and Austin Nice leading up to the train more that was planned just for the people that were on the train more. And we all had an email a couple of days before that telling us about our turf. Um, Marie and I, luckily we were in the same area. So that made um, things easier for us because we got to share some information. But Austin said, you know, make sure you know your names list out there and um, research those people and, you know, figure out where they work, um, you know, people they know, whatever it may be. And <clears throat> um, when we researched our area, we had to extend our mileage on the app just to even get a decent amount of names. Um, it started with five miles and maybe 10 names. So we just expanded that a little bit. Um, and actually I'm glad that we did because when we got there, Coleman was way bigger than we anticipated. Um, but we just went on uh, Wikipedia and did a general search and figured out like the population. Big thing in that town was the schools. Um, lots of Christian schools there, private schools, um, things like that figured out, um, honestly, like just all the demographics, you know, mostly, very much so mostly white, um, you know, figuring out um, what were some other things that were on there. Oh, um, yeah, because I'd actually, I don't know anything about a lot of sports people, so I'd sent this to Van, but figuring out people that were born there, um, and actually like Channing Tatum was born in our area. That was the only name that Maria and I recognized, but none of the sports people <laughs> did we recognize. Um, but just little hey, things. Like that. For everybody. Do what? <laughs> The chain of hitting that makes up for everybody. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, so we just, it, we started there. Um, and then for me, I jumped right into going to the Sheriff's Department um, website and just looked on there and figured out who everybody was. I made a list from, and I couldn't tell you what it is because I'm not very good with those names, but fortunately everybody had a picture too, like from the Sheriff, all the way down um, and everybody that was head over every department, their picture was posted there, basically with their title, so on and so forth. So I knew what the sheriff looked like before I ever got there. Um, also knew how long he had served. And there's this rodeo thing that they do that is <clears throat> an annual thing that's a huge benefit apparently in that town. So we knew that and I kind of stuck that in my pocket. Um, Maria did a little bit more research in terms of the GoFundMes and shared that with me, which was, really, really beneficial when we went to the real estate office, but she had found some that were kids with cancer. Those were the, those were honestly the ones that everybody picked up on because they did things like parades for those kids um, when they were battling cancer, um, you know, all kinds of just community things to help the families out for these children. And um, so we had those kind of in our pocket, but we also took our names list and guys, if you just Google let's just say Nancy Smith and we were in Coleman, um, Coleman, you know, Alabama, it pulls up information about her. It pulled up her, her, her husband, where they're employed. Fortunately, she was the very first one and she had a LinkedIn page. So if you have a LinkedIn page, then naturally you can go on there and you can see a whole lot more uh, information about her. Um, you know, there was one family, we didn't get to catch up with them, but both of them were professors. If you know much about Alabama, you got Auburn and Alabama. One, one parent, I mean, one of the spouse was a professor at Alabama, one was at Auburn. So even though we never met, met them, we still kind of told stories um, pertaining to that because that's, that's like UNC and Duke here. So, um, but knowing that stuff, uh, where those people lived, um, where they worked, that was huge. Um, but the sheriff's department, so we decided, I guess on, I think it was on Tuesday. Yeah, Monday we went out, honestly, um, and what felt like we just ate the dirt, I mean, all day long. I mean, you're just making as many contacts as possible. But I will say this, um, because we had never been on a train more, we didn't know what to expect. Fortunately, we had a good group that does it every month. Uh, <clears throat> but they kind of told us like, hey, you know, 
the first two days of the week are definitely planning. Um, don't even be upset if you have zero sales whatsoever. You are just trying to set up appointments with people. So on Tuesday, we went to the sheriff's department. Marie and I were driving separate because we kind of divided our turf. We met there, but I actually had forgotten my freaking folder at the salon I was just at, which was two minutes away. So I left there. She waited a minute and was just kind of reviewing her names list. And the way the GPS brought me back in, I was coming in the back of the parking lot. Well, because I knew what the sheriff looked like, I realized that the guy standing in the parking lot that waved me past as somebody was backing up was the sheriff. So, of course, I go around and I fly up to Maria, who's parked in her car. I was like, let's go because the sheriff's right there. And you guys know most of the time you're never going to walk in a sheriff's department and go straight to talking to the sheriff. Um, so I was like, this is our best chance to just completely miss the gatekeeper. So I just walked up introduced myself, said, hey, Sheriff Gentry, um, shook his hand and he looked at me like he probably should have known me. Um, next thing you know, he's let us come in and demo him, which gave us the story. It wasn't a fit for him, but he also had give us the green light if we wanted to come in. It just didn't work out schedule wise because we were only there for a week. Um, however, he gave us a really good story, which was his brother-in-law um, was the longest living pancreatic cancer survivor in Alabama and he went to MD Anderson and I can't remember I want to say that's like I want to say it was between eight and 12 hours drive from where they were in Alabama to there in Texas um, and he did that back and forth for 15 years um, and so it, it's stories like that you guys that really do make a difference everybody in that town knew he, who he was knew who Chief Gentry was um, then Maria had done her research on the police department kind of thing. So we literally left the sheriff's department, went straight to the police department and actually got to sit down with the chief of police the same day. Um, same day. Well, with him, he's getting ready to retire. And apparently the HR lady there um, gives him a hard time and gets he gets in trouble with her. So, of course, he sent us to her. But that was not before sitting down, letting us demo him and also getting more names because you know, I mean, he's, he had served for, I think this year was his 44th year serving. Um, so everybody knew who he was. They even knew who his parents were, things like that. And both his parents had had cancer. So this is just, I mean, it wasn't even about getting in those places for us. It was the names that everybody knew building that trust right up front as soon as we went somewhere um, with those names and those stories. Um, <clears throat> when we went to find Wendy, the one client that was a realtor, um, she worked at um, Riker and we showed up there on, I think it was, I'm trying to think, we showed up there Tuesday morning. My days are running together. There was a lot of hours worked. Um, but we showed up there and walked in looking for Wendy. There was nobody there, but the office secretary. And she happened to be on a call. And so she literally just says, Hey guys, I'm on a call. Can I help you? And we were like, yeah, we're trying to catch up with Wendy. She's a client of ours. Um, do you know how we could reach her? And she was like, uh, yeah. And <clears throat> she was like, what is it that you guys do? <clears throat> and we just went through a really quick intro and she said, well, you guys can come back tomorrow. We have our weekly meeting at 9 AM. And it, it was so easy. Marie and I actually looked at each other just kind of like, did that just happen? because we didn't even ask. She just said, hey, you guys can come. We were like, sweet. Do you guys normally have breakfast? And they were like, no. I was like, well, you do tomorrow. So, um, you know, we just planned on being there, Ask how many people showed up. They had their meeting first and then Maria did a group presentation and I kind of chimed in a little bit. We gave them breakfast, but here's the crazy part too about this is between um, just the few days that we had been there, two guys that were well-known in that community had passed away. One, was a 39 year old and it was heart conditions, um, nothing pre-existing, and he left behind four children. Um, another was a young man in his thirties as well who was killed in a car accident. He was riding a motorcycle actually. Um, and so he was killed in an accident. So it was really, really fresh on their mind um, that life can happen and then having those stories and already having that trust because Wendy was a client which happened to be a client for 10 years and didn't realize it. Um, with a $99 a month <laughs> premium and doesn't realize she's a client for um, 10 years. But 
those kind of things um, and just making the sense of urgency with every single person that we sat down with. Me and Maria both were a little skeptical about that going into it because we're like, oh man, are we automatically going to um, not have trust because we're, hey, we're only here until Friday. It even got to a point where me and Maria made it to where because we needed to leave our turf by 5 p.m. on Friday. We said, hey, look, the last appointment we can take is at 4 p.m. on Friday. That's all we got. Um, we got to go back to North Carolina. And surprisingly, that just really, really increased the sense of urgency with people. Um, and then, of course, you know, just nailing the buying atmosphere with the spouse objections and being knowing your rebuttals, rebuttals to be able to get over those um, or setting an appointment. We didn't have a whole lot of, of luck with setting appointments. Um, I feel like that's a little harder to do these days anyways with crazy busy spouses. But most of them, we got them to a point where they felt like they could make a decision without their spouse. <clears throat> but all in all, guys, just that research. Um, and then, you know, the longer we were in the turf, the more names that we had, the more stories we had. And even though Coleman was really big, it was still very small in the aspect that everybody kind of knew everybody. And... I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've been in Mount Airy now for a year and after doing that research there and seeing how impactful it was, it made me feel like for one, I have not done my turf justice by even digging out my client list that isn't me, that I didn't write the business. I mean, I probably should have done that a long time ago and make those connections with those people because that's just that many more names that I have in my pocket to use. Um, you know, and one thing that we figured out too, um, which I kind of knew this before going into it, but when you run into somebody that is a client already and, you know, especially out there, they don't have an active agent really. So making sure to just basically resurface them, even though, you know, we're not getting anything out of it. Hey, do we owe you any money? And just showing them that we're going to be there. We're going to give good customer service also establishes trust with them on the front end. Um, but yeah, I mean, now I realize I've kind of been doing a crappy job of getting rookies um, ready for their turf. Um, there's so many things that I could do to take 30 minutes the night before even I go to train somebody and figure out some power names and a little bit about the community that I'll be honest, I, I do a very slack job of that. I won't now because I realize the biggest, the big difference that it can make. If we would have went in there and we would have not done our research, Maria and I, neither one, we would have, we would have just worked really, really, really hard. <laughs> Um, and probably I can definitely say we would have not had the success that we did if we would have not put up. what I think maybe two hours in, when did I fly out Sunday? Yeah. So Saturday, I got up Saturday morning and that's what I did. I mean, I just took my time and wrote it all out and I actually put it in a notebook. I like went and bought some composition notebooks just for this one to take notes um, from the meetings that were held every morning and one, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Um, <laughs> and one, um, just to have all my names and I used the one that had all the names. I still, I used that exact same notebook to put referrals in and every business I went into. And because I hadn't been there, every business I went in, I took very, very meticulous notes. Um, what stories they told me. I mean, one of the very first places I went in, a little boy was, um, 12 years old and he had cancer when he was six, beat it. He had a brain tumor, beat it. But now he suffered um, seizures because of the scar tissue on his brain from the surgery. So like little things like that. Um, and he has a single mom, you know, she, she didn't sign up, but I had that story in my pocket. Um, you know, it's just. It's Do you have that notebook handy? Could you just like show what it looks like? Hold on. Casey, you said you spent about two hours just kind of doing some research and stuff like that, just get, figure out names. I mean, just God almighty, how valuable is that two hours of your life? <laughs> um, uh, and that's the thing. Like, so, uh, Maria, I mean, she, Maria is a little more meticulous than I am, um, but I, she probably spent a little more than I did because that's Maria's nature. Um, but I spent two hours doing it. And then, you know, what we did is we kind of airdropped things to each other what we had, like anything, like the stories, she airdropped those to me. So I went over them while we were on the plane, just reading over those. Um, and she yeah. did the same thing. So hold on one second. Let me see if I can get that. You know, the crazy thing is, um, you know, and, and Van, obviously you'll, you'll, 
find a, you know, a lot of value in this. Uh, this is just one trip that Casey and Maria made to th this territory that I've never been to before. I guarantee you, most of the people that are in our agencies don't even know that much about their territories that they're in, that they work in every day. Um, and y'all, sorry, I'm trying to spend a little bit of time with the kids. Cass and I, we fly out to Nashville, Tennessee here in uh, about an hour or so. So uh, we got to leave for Nashville in about an hour or so, but uh, I apologize for the distraction over here. But I mean, God almighty, y'all, I mean, having, have, just having simple conversations about this. Hey, look, this is how powerful this little, little research on this territory was for Kate, Caitlin and Maria to go and work just a weekend. Imagine how powerful it would be if you had all this information for your own territory that you work in every single day. Um, and how, how much value that's going to bring to your future uh, for your territory. So um, I don't know. That, that's, that's the biggest takeaway that I get from this thing is I, I definitely want to have a conversation, a very clear conversation with the agents uh, in my organization um, about how powerful that is. And if they're not doing that, if they don't, and if they haven't done it already, then um, they ain't doing it right. Um, this is a prime example of that. So, Casey, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for yeah, doing that. I definitely need to look at the names list and uh, mainly yeah. look at the ones that aren't my clients. Right. You know, and just yeah. find out who the heck they are. They where do they work? Go visit them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, of course, I mean, having all those power names and their stories and everything is huge. Right. Um, yeah. obviously, but even, uh, I mean, y'all, and even encouraging your agents, uh, you know, agents on your team, to you know, pull up GoFundMe, you know, all the GoFundMe stories in, in your areas and, you know, use those stories. I mean, things like that. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's every single city or county has thousands of these things. Um, and these are all families who just didn't have the opportunity to sit down with somebody like us and get protected, yeah. um, before something happened. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, hell, I mean, Casey, I mean, prime example, um, you know, and it makes it easier for us as leaders to be like, hey, guess what Casey did last week in a territory that she'd never been to before? Wrote about 18K in premium. You know how she did it? Like this, you know, and just explain that to them. <laughs> so simple to do. Um, uh, you know, you know, one of those things. Um, yeah. yeah. Josie, I really man you're point. muted <laughs> don't know worries man you're muted. It's, he wasn't talking you don't want to hear me anyway no i just said <laughs> I was just saying guys it's, it's like a lot of things in our business it's easy to do and it's just as easy to not do you know um and again fail, failure is a heck of a lot easier than success right you can never leave your couch and be a be a failure all day long um but preparation uh, makes all the difference. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So um, guys, one of the biggest challenges I've noticed that we have uh, on, on train more in a lot of weeks, not just train more weeks, but um, if we have a slow start, it kind of retards the growth of that week, big time. Um, how great would it be if every Monday you had three or four solid appointments that were reservices you know, that you just, that you were looking forward to. Well, why wouldn't we every Thursday or Friday book two or three or four of those for the following Monday? So we got something to look forward to. Um, the other place that we're challenged sometimes, guys, are, are strong finishes. We're pretty good about the middle part. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of take care of themselves. Mondays and Wednesdays, the bookend of Mondays and Fridays, the bookend of the week, that's where we had, when we do have challenges where they are. So I, I would just challenge if we know that, then doing nothing about it and just doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is insanity. Then let's proactively um, every, you know, every Thursday, Friday book four of these for the next Monday and every Monday, Tuesday, go ahead and book three or four of them for the, for Friday. If you don't already have a big enrollment or follow up for an enrollment on Thursday or something like that. And just, you know, we, we know what our, what our, our weaker spots are, or our, our growth opportunities are let's fill in the holes and that's just part of that whole overall deal of playing chess, not checkers and being really smart with our business. And when we do that and we show rookies how to do it, I think sometimes we shy away from doing things like this in front of rookies because, oh, rookies don't have a big uh, reservice list. Well, they, A, they will. And B, we can get them a, a termed agent list on uh, pretty easily with, with, a, with an email, right? Um, or calling back cancellations. 
Is your hands no. in there? Um, some, some of us don't even call back our cancellations, but um, call back cancellations or, or termed or pins in front of your rookie, right? When they're in the car with you, do it with them. So then when you're done with it, you can turn to them and say, yeah, that was someone that was up for termination. That's just part of our business. You know, about 10% of it kind of changes their mind, gets some buyer's remorse. And heck, a lot of these people don't even know they're up for termination. Like they changed banks or something happened or they missed a, missed a, um, missed a, a digit in their, in their number. And um, it's on us to, to reach out to those people. So you can do that, guys, when you're doing something. And at the same time you're doing it, you're teaching somebody else a good habit. That's um, you're, you're, you're now building a, building a sales team of strong agents that will carry on um, for a long time. One more thing that we did do that I forgot about um, is know your hospitals around there. Um, know the good ones and know the not so good ones. We had to figure out the not so good ones, but that didn't take very long. Um, it's no different than like in my turf, the, the hospital up there. Most people aren't going there. They're going to go to the better hospital, whether that's 30 minutes away, an hour away. Um, and just knowing that um, kind of allowed me and her to connect with people as well. Um, and obviously it puts a little bit more um, significance on the travel benefits, so. Right on, well done, Casey. Thanks so much for sharing that. Guys, any specific questions? Um, Josiah, that was a real good one about the notebook, but anything else that, um, that you guys would like to know about the secret sauce? Because it wasn't really a secret, right? It was kind of shared on, it was shared with you on Friday what to do. Andy had a little little Zoom meeting with everybody and said what to do. And you guys were just silly enough to follow his lead and do it. And it led you to the promised land. So congratulations on a best week. Well, I guess technically that was your third best week um, of your career. Um, and, uh, but a damn good one and, uh, and, and great. And uh, Sure was cool to see you guys have a really great first ever uh, train more experience and hear that you want to go back and do more. So not going to do one necessarily on uh, on PPW, uh, not able to really throw that together um, and get the participation we were wanting. But uh, at some point, we probably should. And guys, I would encourage you at some point, if we're not, if we don't just come up with one on our own, hell, go hop on a plane, go fly out. Um, I hadn't really planned on doing this. I didn't I didn't tell the girls I was going to do this. They they dropped. 14, 1500 bucks of their own money between a, a flight, um, a, 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 you know, a rental car and hotel. Um, but when I saw that they sold $40,000 worth of premium at the end, I said, Hey, tell you what, if you guys will get me your receipts, I'll take care of your, your, your flights and your hotel. Um, because it's just an investment back in the business. And guys, I'll tell you right now, I'll make, yeah. I would do that for you. You go out and get similar results like that. I would do it for you. Or if you needed some kind of incentive on the front end, uh, for that to get you a little bit extra motivated, no, no problem with that. But uh, you guys make investments in yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely match those investments. So I'll send you my receipts, man. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> um, I, I will reroute them over to Kyle. But thank you for, for, for doing those to me. Uh, guys, have a great day. Thank you for hopping on. Um, this has been recorded. So if you wouldn't mind sharing with our other partners that are normally on here that weren't. Uh, what the great yeah I sent out a, uh, a I sent out a good text this morning to uh <clears throat> four of the people in the in my organization that should have been on this call that were apparently on the other call about how important it is to set reminders in your phone to be on proper calls uh, yeah. that are designed for you and where you are in this you know at this stage in, in life in this business so um <clears throat> yeah attendance will be much better next Tuesday well, you guys are in for a treat starting next Tuesday because it's uh it's gonna be Todd the Bod Styles rocking this thing in his seventh year with uh with Kyle, um and Brad and I'll be tag team and hopping on the other one, making sure that that's uh that's running smoothly with the rookies. So thanks for being on, guys. Let's go have a big uh, hey, big man. Tuesday. Yes, sir. Um, I did want to say real quick, um, if y'all want to jump off, you can, or y'all can hear this or not. I don't really care. Uh, I